What is going on guys? Coach Joe here at the Lions Den located in Colmar, PA. And since my bicep is kind of out of play right now, I had a fun idea to put one of my members through my workout. Uh, so this is Charles. Charles has been programmed for about a year, right? We programmed together? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. About a year. He's doing his own thing kind of right now, uh, just because I kind of laid down the base and foundations for him. Uh, but it's just a lot of fun. So we're going to go through his training, talk about his journey. He's got a push day set up. Uh, so we'll go through training tips, and you guys can learn a lot more about Charles. So uh, first thing on tap, we got our new Cybex overhead uh, press machine. So we're going to use that, and uh, let's just get right to it. Yeah, so my name is Charles. I'm a security engineer at Verizon. Um, I got, I started my, my journey actually at work. So I was uh, really, really unhealthy, and I decided to check out the gym at work. And from there, uh, there was a coach that started to tell me about, like, RP Strength and Iron Culture Podcast, which then led me to uh, uh, learning about Omar Isif, which then I saw that he was uh, went to a, a holiday, like a holiday kind of lifting. We're here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was uh, our, uh, our heavy metal barbecue. Oh, get up! Get up! <laughs> yeah, so we had a... Uh, Basically, it's a big party here. We lifted weights and then we did like Q and A's. Had a little bit of a seminar, but yeah, I brought Omar here. So, so. Yeah, so they were. They said it was uh, right outside of Philadelphia. I looked it up and it was like 10 minutes from my house. So I was like, oh, this is awesome. So then I came in here um, and uh, signed up, and then I started custom programming, and uh, it's been a journey. Uh, come on. Push. Come on. Push. Let's go, let's go, come on. Go, 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 come on. Push. That was good. Last one was like the fastest one. I hear them. I hear Dr. Mike say, I curse? Yeah, I hear Dr. Mike in my head say, one more motherfucker. <laughs> What were some of like your biggest mistakes you made in your your lifting journey so far? Your thing it just stands out. Like sometimes it's not having a program. Sometimes it's uh, just not recording. Like some people don't track their progress. Uh, it could be something like nutrition. Like you find like looking back, you're like man, I really was I really messed this up, and I'm glad I, I made a correction with that. Yeah. Like not like trying to kind of wing it, trying to kind of be like, okay, I got it. Yeah, yeah. After just a little bit of research, I really, I, I felt like I started to get more by really digging it, watching lots and lots of videos, and then watching, trying to watch full like a full series. Yeah. You know, like watching like some of yours, but like a whole bunch of them, right? That kind of lead into each other. Yeah. And I, I felt like it's like it's like coming into a series like halfway through, right? You kind of don't understand what's going on you need to kind of go back a little bit. And then uh, focusing on form, that was really, really yeah, key. Yeah. Like really focusing, because it's really hard to get that, that mind-muscle connection when you don't have any muscles. All right, so we just uh, finished up the overhead press with Cybex, now we're gonna do uh, some hex presses. So interesting to talk to him on why he switched over to hex presses. Uh, so I'm gonna let him talk more about that, but we'll probably do three sets here as well, uh, anywhere between that 12 to 15 rep range, because he is you know, focusing on more hypertrophy-esque uh, training. So let's get to it. Come on. Come on, good set here, let's go. Focus on squeezing those hex heads together as tight as you can. Come on. Good. That's it. Come on. There you go, Charles. Let's go. Come on, push. That's it. Keep squeezing together. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Wow, nice. Good job. So, Tell us why you switched over to the hex press. You were kind of talking about some of like low cable flies, right? Yeah. And then this is something that you, you started doing, you like these better? Yes, sir. So with when it comes to the low cable flies, uh, my arms are really long and skinny. And what happens is when I when I start increasing the weight, I feel way I feel way more pressure on my on my joints, like on my on my elbows and on my biceps. And I'm not I don't I 
I have to really reduce the weight to be able to focus on my chest. So I was like, okay, well, what movement can I do to, to mimic that, right? So then I start researching what exercises, I'll Google like what exercises are similar to it. And then I'll be like, okay, well, let me go, let me go watch some videos, right? And I was actually watching some of your videos. I saw you doing the hex press. Um, and then I was like, okay, well, let me, how is that, right? How is it like, uh, pull it back, chest back, right? Is the movement the same? And I was like, it looks like the same to me. So I'll try that out and it feels like it works. Yeah, so basically, guys, you know, it's good to do what he's doing, right? Where you watch someone doing something, they talk about it, and then you have to go and try and apply. And obviously, everybody is different. So for me, you know, a low cable fly feels good, right? It, it hits the target muscle. Uh, but for him, if he's feeling it in his joints and not the target muscle that's desired, change it up, right? Don't just do the same exercise as somebody because they're saying it, it works for them. Uh, if it doesn't work for you, okay? But I see that happen so often where people watch YouTube and they go, oh, well, someone's doing this, right? I need to do it exactly like them. And that's not the case. We're just putting out what we think works and hopefully they're saying, you know, try it uh, for you and then, you know, take that information, process it. And if it works, cool. If not, discard it or try something else that's similar, uh, which is cool that he's done that. You know, he's obviously worked with me for over a year of custom programming and he can take those principles and philosophies and then, you know, take what worked and then modify and adjust what didn't work uh, to best suit him. Where is this from? My wife bought it for me. Okay. She's really into like uh, anime and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she was an animator for Card. Did uh, you live overseas too? Part, yeah, I lived in East Asia for almost 10 years. I lived in uh, Taiwan, uh, mainland China, uh, South Korea. Do you speak language? I speak, uh, I speak Mandarin Chinese. How do you say we're going to get jacked in the gym? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say get jacked, but say, you know, Yundong uh, Haobang, like okay. really good, like exercise really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> I don't know what he just said, but I'm hoping he wasn't insulting me. Beautiful. Let's go, Charles. Come on, come on, come on. Nice. Good job, dude. Charles, how old are you? 42. I thought Charles, I swear to God, when Charles came out, I thought he was like 28. And then he told me he had like kids, and his kids were like in their teenager, like high school, and I was like, all right, something is either wrong with him getting jiggy with it when he was super young, or he's older, and he's 40, you he look great. Like, I was watching him talk, I'm like, he doesn't look like he's in his 40s at all. Yeah, 42, I'll be 43 coming up in, uh, well, I'm like 42 and a half, so like yeah, anywhere yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it's unfortunate for my kids. My, my oldest <laughs> is like, my oldest is, uh, she's gonna be 19. She's a college student this fall. And uh, so proud of her, proud of my kids. I love them, they're the greatest ever. But uh, yeah, they can't, they can't hide stuff from me. <laughs> it's the same thing, my, my daughter's talking about Twitch and I know all the drama that's going on. So, so at first she hated it, but now, now she kind of likes it. That's it, come on, come on, big stretch. That's it, here we go. That's what counts, right there, come on. Good quality. Push, come on, come on. Get it up. Nice, dude. Real good. Great form, man. Oh my god. Good form, good technique. So we just got finished doing the incline dumbbell press. Really love his control on the eccentric. Uh, just control in general, like getting that full range of motion. Obviously talks about being a big fan of RP, Dr. Mike, which is one of the mentors uh, of myself. So we have a lot of the same principles. Uh, but he did uh, three or four sets around 12, 15 reps there. And then now we're gonna do dips and then end with some rear delt flies, uh, forehead supported on the bench, uh, which I personally love. Uh, and then that'll kind of be it. So, you know, hopefully you guys are enjoying, you know, me training, uh, you know, putting Charles through his workout, kind of learning more uh, about his journey. He's a super cool guy. And I think you guys can relate a lot to him. Uh, so yeah, it's been fun. That freaking death. Let's go. Come on. Beautiful. Come on, come on, come on. 
Come on. Come on, you gotta let's go. One more. Push. Oh, nice. Guys, you see that thing in range of motion? That looks beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. So many people do dips and they're always either above 90 degrees or maybe just getting to 90. When, uh, you know, like Charles is using here, a band is a great way to assist you to just grow strength in that range of motion and then slowly wean off of it. Uh, but they were flawless. I'm very, very proud of how they look. Like, that one actually, my dips, actually watch the video with uh, John Meadows showing how he does dips to Jay Cutler. And one of the things they were talking about is, is, is leaning forward to get that, that, um, that extension on your chest. Yeah, yeah, big stretch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Nice, dude. Good job. How many sets are we doing here? I have one more and then one more? done. Actually, I think... Uh, I think it's done. There we go, good. Perfect. Nice and control. There you go. Come up. So uh, rear delts, guys, are one of those things that really help aesthetically set you apart from others. Uh, reason being, it's, it's gonna make your arm just look way bigger too. So a lot of people just think biceps and triceps, uh, but if you're flexing from the side, what's gonna make that arm appear massive is if you get a huge cap uh, to those deltoids and that rear delt popping. So uh, for you guys who aren't training rear delts, I would highly recommend training delts. The other thing about uh, shoulder training in general is it's a smaller muscle group so you can train a little bit more frequently so I like to train shoulders at least three times a week that doesn't mean that I'll do a ton of exercises per session but maybe I'll do one or two on a Monday maybe one on a Wednesday and maybe one or two on like a Friday or something like that they tend to just recover faster so you can get a little bit more volume in uh, with that muscle group all right guys so that's pretty much uh, Charles session for today so it's mainly a push day we had some shoulders we got some chest a little bit of dip action for the triceps and finish with some rear delts uh, so first off, I just want to say thanks, Charles, obviously for getting on the channel, uh, supporting you know the gym and everything like that. Uh, but man, if you could maybe give any just like one piece of advice to anybody beginning or doing their journey, what would it be? Uh, and then we'll kind of wrap this thing up. So nutrition, right? Food, 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 food. Start tracking your food. Everything. Things you drink, right? You drink calories. So track everything. Track everything for. A good month and then once you once you can really find your maintenance then that's gonna make a, a, lot, a, a lot of things easier right massing uh, cutting uh, recovery it's been really really important um, also is is uh, um, don't don't try to compare yourself to other people you're you you know and I, I know that one of the, the hardest thing for me to hear coming from my coach was when I would ask a question, he'd be like, well, it depends, right? It depends. And it's like, yeah, you want a real answer, but everybody's different for when it comes to different exercises or muscle growth or no matter what it is, we're all, we're all individuals. Don't compare yourself to other people. You're you and your journey's gonna be different. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And it's super cool to have him on. Uh, he's been working with me for a long time. I kind of gave him the tools and now he's doing his thing. But I feel like I'm always a coach. So it's like he always is cool to reach out to me, pick my brain. And, you know, I see him here every day. Uh, so it's really cool to see him progress uh, and really take those principles and mold them into his own, what works best for him. Uh, but this is going to be part one, guys. We're going to do uh, his pull day and also his leg day because he's doing a push-pull leg split. So we'll go through those days. Uh, you guys can see how he trains, just get to know him a little bit more. Uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, so as always, guys, make sure you give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, and stay a lean, mean, strike machine. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.